G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Monday afternoon here in Australia and the market is up ever so slightly, not a whole lot. 0.2 of a percent, but still up, but have a look at Bitcoin. $62,000 and above, so things are looking quite nice there, but what you can see is it is sucking a lot of the, you know, as they say, the air out of the room. Altcoins are starting to struggle a little bit now. It's not to say that there's no altcoins that are going to make money. There's always outliers. But if Bitcoin gets up on a run, these altcoins will really start to lag behind. It doesn't really mean that they will lose dollar value you know, overall. They will still get dragged up slowly, but Bitcoin will just kind of see a majority of the money. At least that's how it's played out in previous uh, history. We'll have to wait and see if that's how it's going to play out this time. You know, we looked at the article the other day where it says altcoins were decoupling from Bitcoin, but I'm just not so sure about that based on what we're seeing now. Bitcoin getting very close to having a breakout, and yet yeah, it's just sucking the liquidity out of a lot of the other altcoins at the moment. They're starting to go down, and Bitcoin is starting to go up. All right, Bitcoin dominance there we see has risen. It's now getting towards 47%. So it'll be interesting to see how high it goes, you know. Will we see sort of 60%, 70% again from Bitcoin? I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. I think you'll definitely see that in the bear market. I'm just not sure if we're going to see that in the bull market. But you'll know when things are really starting to get crazy is when Bitcoin dominance drops down and it gets into the 30s and that when, you know, the altcoins are just starting to go absolutely ballistic and we have that false, fel, false mating, <laughs> face melting blow off top and then alt season that everyone is predicting. Now, I've got to say, a lot of people are predicting that it's going to come in sort of December at the end of the year. I just, I don't know. I get the feeling like it's either coming earlier, so, you know, November, or it's going to come later and there's going to be a bit of a fake out. I think there's probably going to be a big pullback before uh, around about 100,000. I think Bitcoin either just, you know, shy, let's say in the 90s, you know, 94, 95 or something, maybe even 98 to get everyone really bullish. And then boom, it drops right down and probably comes back down to 70,000, maybe even 60,000, and then has another big leg up from there. Or we go, you know, kind of over 100,000. I just get the feeling like there's going to be a shakeout before we get to the true uh, blow off top. Now, again, I think we're going to 100,000 and above. I really do. But nothing I say is financial advice, and I'm, I just can't put my heart on my hand and tell you that that is what's happening, because I just don't know, and that's the truth. No one really knows, but I think 100,000 is fairly doable. Now we have to wait and see whether it plays out, because a lot of people are thinking it is going to 100,000 and above. So again, maybe the big players, they've got a, you know, they've, they've got a different mindset and you know maybe you're going to prevent that or maybe completely make it really overshoot 100,000 and have a lot of people sell their bitcoin at sort of around 100,000 so they can then buy it up and then push it to you know these crazy num not so much crazy but you know these higher targets that people have talked about you know plan b and 200 something thousand uh Raoul paul saying you know maybe three four five hundred thousand and you know other people have said numbers like that i just i don't know I would love to see it do that, but my plan is I'm going to start taking profits. From here on in, if it really starts to get crazy, because it hasn't got crazy yet and we still haven't seen you know, the FOMO, you can just go to Google Trend Search, buy Bitcoin, and you'll see where the FOMO is. Until that's really starting to get high, then we're not in the FOMO and there's no real need for the price to have any major corrections. It's not to say it can't, but it's just why would it? It's unfortunate that it's the new money that comes in. They're the ones that are really going to get burned. People who've been around before have generally got a strategy. And so for me, I'm going to start taking some profits when things start to get a little bit crazy. It's not crazy at the moment, and it could be wrong. I've been wrong before, and maybe it all tanks before I get to take any real profits. But I'm just not so sure about that. I'll be able to look at the on-chain metrics. And again, Google search, you know, buy Bitcoin and just sort of see where it's all at. And you'll just be able to tell by the prices and the market in the charts. When they start to really go parabolic and things are, you know, doubling, you know, in a matter of, you know, days to a week, 
that's probably, and not just one thing, because you can always have some random that's just pumping, but if a number of coins are, you know, doubling and sort of tripling in a matter of days to a week, that's generally a good indication that you're probably at the top when it's really starting to do that. So when things start to, you know, you just get that feeling. If you get that feeling like, oh man, I'm gonna be so rich, that's the indication. Again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion, but that's actually the indication not to put in more, to actually start taking profits heavily around about there would be my personal opinion, not financial advice. Because I know I've been there before and that's exactly what happened to me. I only put a few dollars in and I just thought, oh my God, I'm gonna make so much money. And that really was right at the top. I just, you know, I know now that, you know, when you get that feeling of just pure exuberance and you can't believe that you're about to be so rich from, you know, whatever money you put in, that is usually that peak FOMO. And if you haven't already taken profits by then, you want to start doing it pretty much straight away. And again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. But that's what I'm looking for. It's not so much price targets. I do have price targets on all the things that I'm invested in where I plan to take some profits, but it's dependent on how the market's doing. If it's just not really frothy, then what's the kind of what's the point? I may as well just sort of let it ride. But look, I could change my mind tomorrow and then maybe it'll be like, no, I'm taking some profits at that point because the market is feeling frothy. And that's what it's more about. It's the whole sentiment and where things are. You know, for Bitcoin now at the moment, I just I, I'm not taking any profits at 62,000. And look, it could go to 63,000 in the next few minutes to hour. And then, you know, that could be the end of the bull cycle for all we know. And it drops back down to, you know, 10,000, 11,000. So be it, I got it wrong. What can you do? But for me at the moment, I just don't feel like it's time. And that's what I really base uh, it on is how I'm feeling. But I also know the way I'm feeling is really going to help me. If I'm getting super bullish and super frothy again like i think that this is just about to you know make me you know a millionaire that's when i'm going to start to take profits i don't think we're anywhere near that and i'm certainly not a millionaire <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination so that's what i'll be waiting for once i start to think things like that that's when i'll be like all right i'm actually going to take profits here because i've been burnt from that before all right last 24 hours what's done well we know bitcoin's up so that's always good Right there we can see Stacks had a nice pump. Zcash doing all right. Shiba Inu, there we go, it's starting to move. Uh, 6.73%. So look, one really good move, and that's from Stacks. They've been sort of fairly volatile for a while now, up and down. And then we got a lot of single digit movers, and fairly low. And that's to be expected considering the market's only up 0.2%. All right, flip side of the coin, what hasn't done well then in the last 24 hours? Top 100 is what I like to focus on. Olympus Dow's really been getting, or Olympus, I don't know if that's Olympus Dow, I think it is. They've really been getting beaten uh, of late. DYDX pumping, and not pumping and dumping, but you know, going up and going down, a little bit all over the place. But look, very similar in the market on the way down. One big mover, and then all the rest were just in single digit sort of territory. And again, that's because the market is fairly sideways at the moment so no really big gains except for one and no really big losses except for one again in the top 100 for me I, on my video the other day i showed you my kind of mid cap and my one sort of low cap i really focus on coins within the top 100 and particularly in the top 50 and even so more you know in that top 20 to 10. those coins you could say you know with some degree of confidence, are fairly legit. I'd be careful about, again, Doge and Shiba, you know, and things like that. But a lot of those projects are, you know, they've, they've got some backing behind them and there's a reason they've made it to there. It's not just wishy-washy sort of stuff. When you get outside of the top 100 and definitely outside of the top 200, you're really... <sighs> Playing with fire, again, is what I would say. So, hence, I don't think I've got anything outside of the top 200. I'd have to go back through and have a look, but I don't think I do. I think, you know, I've only got a couple of coins outside the top 100, and I think there's three of them, and everything else is in the top 100. Now, when things start to get profy, pr frothy, profy, <laughs> frothy, 
you need to have some kind of plan. Like, what is your plan? Are you just in crypto and you're just hodling for the next 10 years? If that's the plan, great. I plan to do that with most of my crypto. Like Bitcoin, hardly going to sell any. Ethereum, I might sell up to a third of it. Uh, Matic, Polygon, I'll probably sell a third to 50% of it. Uh, and then, you know, as we sort of move down the list, these other coins, I really do plan on selling uh you know, at least 50%, if not maybe more. You know, my ADA holdings, I'll probably sell, uh, I'd say sort of 30%. Again, I may sell some more. I got them at such a cheap price that I, yeah, I've done pretty well on them already. So taking some profits and hopefully buy back in, you know, in the next bear market. And if it turns out I'm wrong, it doesn't matter. I'll still have a good bag left, you know, sort of 50% uh, on average. Of Again, things like Matic, Polkadot, uh, Cardano, oh sorry, that is ADA. Those I don't plan on selling more than sort of half, uh, half of it, unless things just get super frothy, and then I'm like, oh, I've got to take some profit here. So that's my plan. But then it is, what do you want to do with that money? What's your plan? You know, are you just going to, again, hodl, which is fine. You're going to buy a car. You're going to buy a house. You're going to buy a business. Go on a holiday. What is your plan? Because to just simply, you know, buy an investment and never sell it or at least take some profit somewhere along the way, then you've got to ask yourself, what's the point? There's got to be a point to it in the end. Maybe you're just going to give everything to your, you know, your children or a friend or something, and that's fine. But just make sure you have a plan of what you're going to do you know, with the gains that you make. Because bear markets, if they play out like they have before, they're pretty brutal, and you could literally be a millionaire one day, and within you know 24 hours, you've lost nearly half of it. And then within a year later, you may be down to only a couple of thousand dollars. It can be that brutal, especially if you're really heavily into the altcoins. Now, we are going to talk about uh, bear cycles and how they might play out in the future very shortly. Let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. I mean, here we can see Bitcoin. It's just really testing at the moment. And this is on the daily. But the weekly, this is looking even more interesting. This will probably take a while. Look at the weekly. It is at an all-time high and getting ready to most likely go higher. Because this is the start of the week. We're waiting to see. It's only 4 o'clock in the morning stateside time. So we're waiting for, again, the sort of 8, 9 o'clock open to see what the market does. You know, do the Bitcoin ETFs get approved? But this is looking very bullish. Now, this could pump up to here and then, again, turn into a red candle. Definitely possible. But that's just the weekly. Again, you can go out to the monthly and even start to have a look at that. Even that is looking quite bullish. The highest monthly close Bitcoin has ever had. So we need to keep that in mind. Things are looking quite positive. We just haven't breached that old all-time high yet. And that's really what I'm waiting to see. Just how high can you know, Bitcoin go in the next few hours, next day, next week? Because... It's definitely possible that we get rejected at this point. I just don't know. And, you know, maybe we get a hard rejection and come back down and retest uh, this. But this could sort of play out for a couple of days. And so, again, maybe, you know, we come back down and test 55,000. I don't think that's what's going to happen. It's just something that I'm considering. But overall, things are looking quite nice at the moment. But that is generally when something scary happens. But in saying that, this, if we scale out, could just be the start of this where we're now going to go on a big move like that where yep probably expecting something a little bit scary to happen again you know this kind of got frothy and then uh, dropped over a little bit of uh, Wyckoff distribution Bart Simpson head pattern there because this was definitely Wyckoff right here this was just a smaller version of it so we'll have to wait and see exactly how everything pans out but you know I am feeling bullish but just because I'm feeling bullish doesn't mean things are going to stay bullish. We'll wait and see. All right, a couple of stories I wanted to focus on. And this is interesting. Bitcoin's biggest whales are in decline, but smaller whales are multiplying rapidly. So Bitcoin addresses holding 1,000 Bitcoins or more is at a record low of 82. Now, the reason that's happening is because there's just so much more demand. Once upon a time, it was pretty easy to have a thousand Bitcoin because number one, it was so cheap and there just wasn't that big a market for it. Now, there's a lot more people wanting to get in. So I think the days of seeing, you know, people with 82, oh, sorry, a thousand 
bitcoins they're going to be limited don't get me wrong the big the big institutions are going to try and buy up as much as they can hence why for me i really don't know if i'm going to sell too much bitcoin at all now if things get sort of super crazy yeah i'll probably take a little bit of profit but it really won't be too much at all because i would hate to sell it thinking i'm going to buy back in cheaper and i just never get the opportunity if that happens with just a little bit of my bitcoin so be it i'm going to keep most of it again got some sitting on block fire some sitting on celsius and the rest of it in cold storage you know i can just hold that for the rest of my life i was lucky i really did buy it at a good price not long after the everything dump uh, in 2020 march 2020 similar with a lot of my altcoins uh matic polygon i bought really cheap you know we'll have to wait and see it doesn't have the history yet but it's looking good hence why i you know i'm not going to sell too much of it number one i'm bullish on it and number two i bought at such a cheap price even in a bear market i don't know if it'd ever go down to those prices eight a similar thing i bought it at a really good price i mean i think i've got some at sort of three cents and eight cents will it ever go back to those levels i don't know but i absolutely do plan on taking profits but this bitcoin this is interesting you know there used to be uh, a lot more bitcoin whales holding a thousand but because demand is starting to grow so rapidly it's getting less and less and it's getting harder and harder to do i mean you know six a uh, thousand bitcoins at the moment that would cost uh, a lot of money what's a thousand on top of sixty two thousand? i think you're up to 620 million something like that or 62 million <laughs> i need a calculator in front of me but it's a lot of money hence why it's becoming harder and harder and Bitcoin just does seem like one of those assets where, you know, buy it and hold. Over the next sort of five to ten years, it's looking like it could do pretty well. Again, never financial advice. That's, you know, just my personal opinion. And it's easy to say that, you know, when you bought something quite cheap and it's now at crazy levels. It's a bit different, you know, if you're buying in now. You really have to believe in Bitcoin and long term to buy it at sort of 62000 uh and not be too worried that it'll ever come back to that price all right speaking of sort of the crashes that i was saying before next bitcoin crash will be shallower than 80 percent says pantera capital ceo now i'm in two minds about this and i'd love to know your thoughts down below go down into the uh, comments down below and let me you let me know if you think bitcoin will ever have another 80 percent crash I personally think it's dependent on how high the price goes. If we see, you know, what Raul Paul thinks it could go to and what Plan B says it could go to, and you've got to remember, that's what they think it could go to, not what they think it is absolutely going to. You know, if Bitcoin gets to 288,000 this run or, you know, 300,000, 400,000, God forbid 500,000, then I think an 80% crash is pretty much guaranteed. If it only makes it to let's say 120, 130, 150,000, something like that, then I think a 50% retracement is probably more what you're going to see from Bitcoin. Not saying it couldn't be 80%, it's definitely possible, but all the money's getting in sort of a roundabout now. You know, the Bitcoin ETFs are starting. Whether they're going to want to, you know, dump it, well, they possibly could. They just want to make sure they sell it all before it gets to the price that they bought it at. But that can be pretty hard sometimes. So me personally, I think if Bitcoin only gets up to around about 150,000, an 80% retracement, I'm not sure we'll see that. But for me, I will start to layer into Bitcoin at around about that 50% retracement level. Now, if Bitcoin gets to something crazy like, you know, 300,000, yeah, I think an 80% plus retracement is definitely possible. But again, if Bitcoin gets to those kind of prices, 80% retracement still doesn't get Bitcoin back to the price that I was, you know, I don't want to call it lucky enough because it wasn't luck. I'd been in the market for a while and watching things that I was fortunate enough is what I'll say to buy at. And, you know, I was, you know, I feel a bit lucky, but I also don't think it's luck. It was more, you know, I'd put the time and effort in and kept an eye on the markets after forgetting about it for about a year. And it just kind of worked out perfect. I forgot it. You know, when the Bay market was really, you know, hurting people, could have made a lot more money if I had got in then, but I didn't. But when I did get back in, it was, you know, a great time. I was putting little bits in, in late 2019. And then we had that March drop off and I just knew that was the time and, and I got in. Now, I, 
I didn't get Bitcoin, unfortunately, down at the 3,800 or 4,000. Uh, I was basically twice that much when I got in, but still, that was a pretty good price. And, you know, it'll be interesting to see if Bitcoin can ever get that low again. If it did get that low again, I can tell you right now, I'd be selling just about everything I have to try and buy more at that price. But again, let me know down below, do you think Bitcoin will see an 80% retracement ever again? For me, absolutely, if it goes to really crazy levels. If it doesn't, then no, I'm thinking more about a 50% retracement. Last but not least, Grayscale are said to be close to filing to convert their Bitcoin fund into a spot ETF. This is what we need. Grayscale have more Bitcoin than I think anyone. If they don't have more than uh, everyone, they couldn't be too far off. A spot ETF, that's the one we really, really want. Now, they, this is just they're close to filing it. And once the application is made, the SEC will have 45 days to review, uh, sorry, 75 days to review it. But what they quite often do is push it out. I think they can push it out another two times or something, another 40 days, and then I think there's another few days after that again. It might be another 40 days. I don't think the SEC is close to letting a spot ETF uh, happen for Bitcoin. I think we might still be probably, you know, again, just personal opinion, probably another year or two away from that. Uh, it might be, you know, in the middle of the bear market, uh, which will probably be the start of the new bull market, something like that. But I'd say we're still at least a couple of months away and they'd want the futures one to run for a while first. So it's good that Grayscale want the spot Bitcoin ETF. And considering they have so much Bitcoin, I think that is the best way for them to go. But I just don't see it getting uh, getting approved anytime soon. And I'd love to be wrong. I really would be. This is the kind of ETF that we want. Spot Bitcoin ETFs. They have them in Canada and other places around the world. But US being the biggest market in the world, that's the one where we really want the spot ETF. Because the futures ETFs, you know, they're not backed by Bitcoin. It's all about just having the cash. And that's not where we want to be, at least not in the long term. Short term, sure, at least it'll get money in, you know, whether it's for the good or the bad, we'll have to wait and see. But the spot Bitcoin ETF, that's the one we're all hoping for. All right, that's it for me again. I really just want to, you know, focus on, you know, if you're starting to feel like you're going to be so rich, personal opinion, not financial advice, You've pr you probably should have been taking profits a little bit before that, but that's the time where you really want to make sure you take some. I'm not saying sell everything, and again, never financial advice. I'm just saying probably take some profits because if you haven't been through a bear market, and what we just went through is not a bear market, bear markets are even worse, they really are bad, and you can see huge losses. I'm talking 90 plus percent. So imagine you, know, you were lucky enough to get it up to a million dollars, and then all of a sudden it just starts to drop and drop and you keep thinking it's going to come back and the next thing you know, you know, it's a couple of months down the line and your million dollars is worth about $10,000 or less. That is what can happen. And particularly if you're in some SHIT coins, it could be even more. So have a strategy. Again, when you're feeling, you know, oh, this is crazy, I'm going to be so rich, that's probably the time that you should have, again, have already taken some profits and if not, really quickly <laughs> please start considering taking some profits because that means the market is just about ready to go pop all right that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another should all be on that gain train at the moment and i'll see you next time